one. Hello, Hello, you guys. Hey, welcome to the women's case. Yeah, and so if you let me have it because oh, she knows that the champagne is, is. Actually, I'm letting you have it because your biscuits were on point this morning. True. Yeah, and you made like True. half a dozen, well, a dozen and a half. So I'm a very happy person. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just drink your shea of champagne. Oh, happy. happy? No, 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 not that happy. No oh. one's that happy. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> I, was, I was like, ooh, bottle to myself. All right now. <laughs> no? No. Dang it. I'm still old a bottle because yesterday we fried fish in an iron skillet on a grill. Outside. It was so Up good. With a hickory wood. Okay. Oh, good. It was, <laughs> it smells good. It smells good. That sounds delicious. I know, and then we got to have leftover breakfast grits with it. So shrimp and grits were left over from breakfast. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. Okay, I'm so I'm still owed a bottle of champagne because I cooked most of that. Well, yeah, yeah that's true. You gotta so make you, sure you she gets it now. <laughs> Stay on her. <laughs> but you cooked the. You should cook the shrimp. I I mean the shrimp and grits, and you cooked just the fish. That's true. Anyway, moving on. Because Corey, because because I'm James. Oh, great. <laughs> And we remember to introduce ourselves. So, Ebola Elbow. You know it. You know it. Oh, okay. yeah. We wrote a bunch of books, right? <laughs> the And I Thought series. Um, and and I, I Life Guys that are Pop Poetry. Just before you <gasps> forget what I'm doing. Yes! I'm okay. Yeah. You're old. You're old that bottle now. Thanks. Thanks. You saved my life. Okay. So, And I Thought the Voice Was Bad with Other Life Lessons available on audible.com and bondsandnoble.com and amazon.com. And then, and I thought we were going to be easy soon on audible.com. I'm just telling y'all, just go ahead and wait for the book on Audible because, like, I wrote the words and I still was like, no, Joe, Joe does an amazing job on my words. So, and, yeah. and Winona's words. So, that's a beautiful thing. So, we put it on Audible, but it's available on Amazon if you want to check it out anyway. And then, and I thought I did my journey alone because that's my favorite book of the whole series. Just letting you guys know. Check it out on Amazon.com. And we'll, the Mr. Guy <clears throat> and um, if, only, if only I Were Me, also available on BarnesandNoble.com. And I am the author of the Widow's Debt series and Foreign Coffee, which is also an audio book. It's my first romance. Don't it's tell anyone really it's not really a romance. Come <laughs> buy it anyway. <laughs> we are the and founders of the 25 Hottest and the Office Artist and Advocate magazine. magazine, which you can check out for $7.50 and 196 pages. So just in case you're bored off your mind, off your mind, in your mind, whatever. In this case, you're bored. Whatever, whatever. But y'all are here to hear about it. Yeah, so for my wonderful guest that had a wonderful commentary. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure thing. My name is Corey Lawson, and I like chicken. And I also like um, bookings. I like it when our clients book things because that's when I get paid and then that's when they get paid and that's when it all aligns. Like they took this big risk, they decided they wanted to act and you know, maybe they didn't book for a whole year and then boom, the job comes. And then all the fruits of their labor is fulfilled for that however long they shoot. And um, so yeah. I'm just, I'm a talent agent here in Atlanta, Georgia. We do a lot of work in Atlanta, um, also in LA and New York and many other places, but probably I would say about 80% of the work we do is here in Atlanta. The sec I call it the second Hollywood. Yeah, we do. That's, yeah. that's exactly what oh. it. Yeah, a lot I of people call not. it ATL Wood. <laughs> oh, see. Oh, yeah. that's, is see, that that's like a, a, I like Yeah, it it's like much. a mini Hollywood. It's like. It's it's in it's in between LA and New York. There's a lot of studios out here, and people wouldn't. There's like nine studios within the perimeter, and they're like humongous, and they're like right around the corner. And if you didn't know it was there, because they're like all bunker, like they're all they all have gates, and you all have to get you have to get security clearance before you get in and stuff. And they all kind of like bunker up their the walls, so you can't really see over. So it kind of it's kind of cool, like. To when you actually get to go on set and be like, oh, I didn't realize that there was this studio half a mile from my building that I that I could actually see the roof of. I just didn't know that that's what that that's what that was. So it's cool to be a part of a like a industry that's still growing and they're still building new studios and it's good to be young and involved in that that early growth process. So it's exciting. It's been a lot of fun so far and hopefully it'll continue to be that way. Okay, so look, I'm gonna take that. 
as you said, being young in the career. I'm going to try to segue on in. So how did you get started in your career since you're so young? Oh, interesting question. So I was working with AT&T as like just a sales court, like a coordinator. And so I was doing that for like five years and I basically had the opportunity to go into management with them or which I didn't feel good about my gut. And I knew that I did not That's not what I wanted to do long-term, but in order to make the next step, I had to do something. Cause I was like five years in the same position. And so I just decided that I wasn't going to do what I didn't want to do anymore. I was going to just take some time off, go back to school and try to get involved into something I'm really interested in. And so about five years ago, I decided to quit that job and I started going to school, went back to school to study film and video at Georgia State. And around that time, my brother had just gotten his hands on the agency and he had just bought it from the people who started it. And he had been working with them for like a year and a half, but they left Atlanta once they started the agency and went back to LA and it was at that time when he offered to buy it from them because you really can't run it unless you're here. Um, you can, you're not going to be as effective at least, but, and so at that time I was in class at Georgia state, he was just working by himself as an eight, just one agent, no, um, nobody else really helping him. And it's really like at least a two person job. If you have two really effective people, you can do it, but it's not really a one person job. It's that's a little bit too much work. Um, so I just got started because my brother literally just asked me, he was like, Hey man, the, the, he actually did hire one guy for like six months. And he, as soon as he hired him, the guy moved and he went, moved back to Florida. And so he wasn't here in Atlanta anymore. And so it was like just a, se a sequence of God opening the door and me just saying yes. So, so it was just basically the way that he got involved was just being at the right place at the right time and just saying yes. So it was just a matter of being willing and being available. So I have to understand that because Winona on this first book right here, Winona has written so many other books, but the end I thought it divorce was bad. The end of the beginning series, she was like, Jade, you have to write with me. And I was like, um, I'm a reader, not a writer. We all know this. We appreciate our own talent. And she's like, no, seriously though, you're gonna write on this book. And here she yeah. is. Several here I am. Wow. Okay. So you never, you never know. Just say yes and try it, you know, because you always, I surprise myself sometimes, you know, and sure I might let myself down, but I will always be more upset with myself if I didn't at least just try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. What do they say? Oh, never mind. I can't remember the saying, so I'm going to let that go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> It'll circle back around. Okay. Okay, first of all, I have to say, I, I, when, we, when I asked him to be on the show, I did not recognize that you were like the brother of the owner. Now I feel very, like, pressured yeah. to do a really good no. job. And so I need to sit up a little straighter. No. No. I'm a so laid-back guy. <laughs> now, my brother's even more laid-back than I am. And usually when we have meetings, he'll usually talk the whole time. And I'm like, how are you so laid-back? Like, he's like, <laughs> I've known him my whole life. And then like we go into meetings together and it's, he'll, it still impresses me. Like hearing him talk, it's like, man, you are really like a grown man now. Like it's my little brother, you know? So it's like, you I always see him as my little brother, but he's done a lot of really good things. And it's in, in turn helped my life. And, you know, I'm I'll always be grateful for him bringing me on and trusting me with his work. It's his company. And then he brought me on and, you know, I'd never be more grateful and, it's just, it's good. It's cool to be able to work with your brother and be able to kind of be on, the, we're on the same page about everything. It just feels good. It feels like I'm in the, doing the right thing. It feels like I'm in the right place in my life. I, do, I definitely, we definitely get that. We do. We yeah. have, yeah. have a it's group a of feeling. five. And now it's down to two and we've been friends for forever. So now it's like, you know, we can just turn to each other and be like, yes. And then we're like, yeah. Yeah. Like just the whole eye conversation. Good feeling. And we got it. Yeah. That's the best thing. Get on to your second question because you know we have to be responsible professional that. so why would you why would a talent why would it yeah why would a talent want to get an agent wow my mouth is not working i need that <laughs> champagne it's no, I heard you. well so, so i have a an opinion on this and i would say that an actor should want to get an agent but they should want to get an agent when they're ready um because a first impression with casting if you, let's say that 
I, I just started my agency and I just need actors. And let's say I see you do an audition and I'm like, oh, she, you know, she, that was pretty good. She could probably be a decent actor or whatever. And so let's say I sign you and then the next day you're going to, you'll probably get an audition. And then that casting director is going to be the first time that they see you. So there's like a bad habit of people wanting to get signed before they're actually ready. And then that kind of like, they get involved in the whole process too early and then they come off to all the casting directors as just not ready like potential but they're gonna they're gonna interview you for two years now before they book you because they want to see you get better and so they i always tell people like you you will you need an agent to be successful it's i'm not it, i'm not saying it's required or anything like that but once you get an agent you have someone who is all day long what they do is try to find you jobs and try to find you roles that you can book on movies, TV shows, commercials, industrials, and things like that. So, and agents have access to stuff that you would never, you would never imagine. Like they have access to everything, just about everything in their market. So once you're ready, you have to go, you have to do that. And you'll want to make sure you get with an agent that has a good reputation and that casting is known to enjoy working with because there's gonna be other things that are out of your control and you don't want that to be one of them. You want to make sure that your agent has a good relationship with casting. And um, that way, all you have to do is knock the audition out and then everything else is up in the air and it's entirely, you're, it's, you're not gonna not book something because, oh, it's something slipped through the cracks on the agent side or whatever. So you absolutely need one, but you want to make sure you're really ready. So I always tell people at least train for a year, take classes for a year, see if you really, really like it because it seems like a, a great career, but when you get on set, like that's when you got to do the job. And that's when it's like, you know, you know, it could be really fun or really, you know, maybe it's going to be really nerve wracking, but still fun at the beginning, or maybe it's just all nerves at the beginning, who knows? But that's why I tell people, you know, just, train as much as you can take as many classes as you can and then when you're ready people will start telling you like hey they'll start recommending you to agents like that's that's the way that i i always tell people let it naturally happen and if you're gonna if you're staying active it will naturally happen so just uh yeah i would say if you don't need an agent until you're ready and then it's time you need one Oh, oh man, see, I like it. And, and then he like answered a couple of questions, so now I can get to ask fun ones. Like, what's a normal day in the life for you? Ooh, so for for me, as of recent with coronavirus and everything, it, it hasn't been like a normal day really. But before that, before the pandemic, it, basically what happens is I'll wake up in the morning, I open my computer, and I just go straight in and make sure I get caught up on all my emails, and then I go in and make sure that we're caught up as an agency on all our submissions. So I do all the pitching first round, like let's say Stranger Things, the shooting uh, here in Atlanta, they're gonna send Jacob and I the breakdown for that TV show. And that's gonna be just a, a list of all that, basically all the characters in each episode that they need. And then I'll start pitching our actors for each role on each, on each uh, episode. And then they'll request those people to audition and then at that point, my brother will pick up and he'll send them the audition request and then they'll send it back to us. And then we send it to casting, but I do all the, all of the first round submissions. So I just wake up and I just start clicking I start typing. I just do that all day. It doesn't ever stop, but it's a lot. It's, you know, I've worked, I've worked some really hard jobs in my life. I've worked since I was 14 and I've worked outdoor, indoor, I've worked sales jobs. I've worked uh, behind the counter jobs and stuff like that. And it's nothing better than being able to work for yourself and, or work with your work for yourself and then also work with family and uh, you know, just be able to do what you feel like. I feel like I'm in the right career path. I don't know what all it's going to lead to, but I'm just excited to be getting started with it and you know, it seems it's like the five years that we've been doing it just goes by so fast. It, does, it seems like it's been like one or two years, but you know, when yeah. you're, when you're staying busy, it does go by fast. 
Yeah. Then we can understand that one Ooh. too. That's yeah. We can understand that one. Time will fly. So you better, just, well, we I just like try to remind head. myself to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, as you should, as you should. So I, I, oh wait, Jade is telling me to stay on task. I can't ask them the question I had. Okay, I'm asking, what is your favorite part of the job? Uh, bookings, definitely bookings. So like, like I was saying earlier, the best part, most fulfilling thing for us is like we're doing all this work constantly. There's a lot of stuff that we do that we don't get paid for. So when it's, it's good to see those bookings come in and it makes us feel like, all right, our relationship as a agent and an actor, we, it's, what we're doing here is working because someone wants to hire you for the role that you auditioned for. So that's the best part of it. You know, the worst part of it is like when there's just no work to be had like now. So you have to try to like find creative ways to stay active and stuff. And that's why I, I took this meeting and um, I actually had a same type of conference call like at two o'clock. It was with um, a lady out in LA or she's actually out in Austin, Texas, but she's a manager and we rep, I think we share like three clients. And uh, so we've just been, you know, networking, staying busy and stuff like that in the downtime. But yeah, I would say definitely my most favorite thing about it is the bookings. It's just the clients, like they put in all the work, you know, and they've been, a lot of them quit their jobs and sacrifice a lot to become an actor. And so it's good to see them win, you know, and you could, you could tell, like, you could tell, like, who's really, who's, you know, it hits them hard whenever they book and it just makes us feel really good. So that's, that's definitely the best part. That's guess, amazing. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Like to be able to be a part of that, that's yeah. gotta be amazing. To be able to help them in any way and facilitate that. Yeah. It's awesome. It, it's really rewarding just to see them win. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to test quickly right there. You know how you said working with your brother, it, it, you guys are always on the same page. So when we just did that, like, it's amazing. I was kind of asking her, can I ask a supplementary question? And she already shook her head, no. <laughs> I was like, wow. And I looked at I was like, I hope he didn't see it. And I was like, no, nope, he didn't see a thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I'm, I'm stuck sticking on the on we, we wrote, we wrote, we wrote them down. You know how we always say people, like, pick the topic? So we pick the topic, and then Mr. Lawson here was like, well, what about the questions? And we were like, all right, these are the questions. I and wrote them like, down. For once in your life, you are sticking to the script. But yeah. sticking to the script. I wrote it. I wrote it. We're yeah. Love you. No. Oh, thank no. you. That's wonderful. Love. Okay. okay. So what are you going to do next? I don't know. Maybe produce. Um, we've been working on, like, several other little small things are kind of in the works, but... Um, yeah, probably move into the, try to get more involved in the production side of things and try to help facilitate in any way on that side. Um, yeah, so I would say maybe like a production, more of a production side of, I will always do the agency, agency stuff as long as I can. As long as it's needed, I, that's, I will want to do that first and foremost. But I think it would be cool to venture out and then maybe start like, a, we've already started the production company. We've done one pro we've got one short, short film right now that's in festival application processes. So we actually already did one. We already produced one and we got it. Um, it's, it's waiting to be approved by, I think there's like four um, film festivals. The first one it did not get approved for, but you know, um, it's our first film. I think it's a good film. So just for the people who are, are watching all the films come in for them to see it, I'm grateful for that. And, um, you know, we can get it into small film festivals, but we didn't submit to any small, we submit to the top five in the world. So like, we didn't really expect it to get into any, but we're still waiting to see if it does. And that's basically what this year is, is waiting to see if we get into anything. And if we don't, then we're going to move down the line, maybe go target some film festivals that are, you know, still like, you know, top 20 in the world, but maybe not top five. Or, you know, like maybe like a little bit smaller ones that are like more local, just to just so that we can start screening it and people can see because a lot of people have been asking us like they want to see it. And we've just been holding it for like a year and a half, because we've been waiting for it to get um, accepted. And so we're probably just going to keep doing more stuff like that over time. And, you know, the more that you guys know, like, after you do the first one, it's kind of like, Oh, cool, that I've already done one. Now let's do another, you know, let's start on the next one. 
And so we're kind of in the startup phases of the second project. Um, but we're like, we haven't even, we don't even have a storyboard for it yet. So it's like, we're at the very beginning of the startup phase, but I think that that's probably the way that we'll move. If I had to guess. That sounds, like that sounds fun, amazing. But where yeah. can people find you on the web? If they are a talent that is developed and ready for an agent, only if you're ready for an agent, where can people find out more information? You can find out, um, our website is privilegetalentagency.com. Um, or if you could just, you could reach out to me directly on Instagram. Um, and I, my Instagram is Corey.Lawson. I think that's it. So it's just my first dot last name. Um, and, you know, I always like helping people and, you know, everything that I've done, I feel like has been because someone else did something before me. And maybe I saw something and maybe took advantage, learned something from something else and then applied it to now. So I always tell people who are starting out, like, you know, if you have a question, just ask. The worst thing that could happen is maybe they didn't answer or something, but it might be a good question and it might be something that you, you may want to look into, you know, before you get started. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or if anybody does have questions, they can reach out to me directly. Uh, through Instagram, or you can email me. My email is on the website. Um, it's Corey at privilegetalentagency.com. So I would gladly answer any questions as long as it's not like a million. Um, <laughs> if I can get to them, I will. So it's been pretty slow. So I've been pretty good about all that while we've been waiting for productions to start producing again. Hey, Jade, I'm trying to catch you I can ask that. No, question no, no, it's whole, done. It's, it's done. Okay, See, no. we're at the end. That was the last question. Okay. I, I love you. But All no. right. So you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. And while you're there, go to the ladies tab, go to the middle of the page and see the charity that we probably support. Yes, we know that times are hard. Not everyone has um, extra money nowadays, but people they really do need to know some knowledge, they have some knowledge, or if you can donate clothes or whatever you can, think about it while we're doing this time. Everyone wins in this situation, and we thank yeah. you in advance. Just remember that wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona and Jade. Bye-bye.